Hey, welcome back to the channel. Last time we were, we got this, uh, uh, what was the bottom of the wing um, piece of trailing edge on here. And today I actually got the other, uh, the other section epoxied in place. And you can see, uh, you can see where those, I've got all those sanded. Um, so they're nice and uh, they follow that 45 nice. Everything looks good there. Um, got everything fared in nicely here. So now that we got that part done, um, as soon as as soon as this epoxy sets, then I'm going to be in a position to put this plywood here. Which sometimes you get to build things, and sometimes you have to like prepare to like build things. So uh, just got some plywood cut up today. Uh, and so these are the four pieces for the um, these are the four pieces that are going to go uh, for the tip and the root, um, two inches wide, um, sixteenth inch ply. However, my uh, tip rib actually ended up just a little bit further apart than that, so I've got these cut just slightly over that. And then I went ahead and cut the uh, sheeting, which is the 0.8 millimeter sheeting that goes um, on the uh, leading edge of the aileron. So now I'm going to get those cut to size uh, because the distances between where they go are set by the quarter inch uh, pieces on the leading edge. Um, I'll show you that here. Basically it's Obviously, from the, the root here down to uh, this, where you have your eighth inch and quarter inch piece double. And this piece crosses right over top of these two, and then centers up on this one where we're doubled again. And then that piece goes from here all the way to the tip. So I'm going to measure these out, um, see if I can get them cut square, and, um, and then I'll figure out, I should have room to actually uh, nail a board into the table so that I can uh, soak um, soak those in uh, water and then get them um, kind of put into a uh, makeshift form, which is actually just going to be squeezing in between two boards, which will hold them in a round shape. Yeah, and then we'll uh, go from there. But um, super happy about this. It's looking really good, so uh, nothing to complain about there. All right, I'm gonna cut some of these, take some measurements, cut those, and then uh, keep moving here. So I'm gonna do this just like I did on the wing, and I'm going to leave myself uh, a little bit of extra to overhang here at the end, and then I'll take care of that. Now, because I have a three degree angle on this, I've gotta actually measure to my longest point, which is down here. So it looks like uh, looks like about go from the outside of that to the outside of this. 47 inches will give me uh, more than enough material hanging over the end. So I'm just going to take uh, one of these and I'm going to mark it at. Mark at 47. I've got a pencil here somewhere, but this will work. So that's going to be 47 inches. And I'll get this middle one. So center to center on that is going to be 45. Make that 44 and 7 eighths. I'm just going to try it at a different, a few different locations just to make sure that they're, they're square and, and nothing's changing. So 44 and 7 eighths, yeah, 44 and 7 eighths will get me uh, center to center, no problem. So we'll mark the second one. Uh, 44 and 7 eighths. And then we'll get the tip one here. And the tip one is going to be 
47 and a half, but I'm going to add an 8, so I'm going to go 47 and 5 eighths. That'll give me about an eighth of an inch hanging over the end. Uh, 47 5 eighths. Try that one more time. I walk away and I'm not sure. Go back and check again. 47 and 5 eighths. Alright. And this one is, uh, the last one I did was the center. Um, this one is the root. And 47 and 5 eighths is the tip. 47 and five-eighths, and that's the tip. All right, now we'll go to the saw and get those cut off. All right. All right, so I've got my measurement uh, measurement set up here, and that's gonna be in the way, so I'm gonna have to move a little bit. Let's go over here. There we go. I'm just going to use this to help me push, uh, but it, since I've got kind of a small piece to come off, it's not a lot of material, um, less than half an inch, so uh, one tip uh, once you, when you're dealing with this thin material is uh, to always put a board, clamp it to your fence so you have no gaps here um, and you don't risk the plywood going underneath there. So, All right, let's cut this one here. Seven eighths. Measure this one one more time. It's definitely it. All right, one more. Forty-seven and 
27 inches. All right. Okay, so I've got the, uh, got the bathtub set up again. And I have my, uh, my tip piece here, which I'll start with soaking first. And then uh, what I've done over here is uh, just have a couple of parallel boards um, set up in here where uh, once the uh, stuff is wet, we just squeeze it so it's into a curve and we force it down in between here. Um, like that, so it'll look like kind of like this. It'll be a nice curve, except I've I've sort of overdone it a little. I am at uh, I'm at a three-inch gap here, and the uh, actual distance that it has to go is uh, more like three and uh, three and a half. So that'll. Probably could have even gone a little bit further, but I think that'll be fine at uh, at three inches to three and a half. That way we'll over curve it. And so when it snaps back, it hopefully will be um, closer. Uh, so it's the same procedure as the wing. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna urethane, uh, bear, put, put my barethane on all of these uh, surfaces here, get this all sealed up on the front edge. Once I get this piece, curved and out of the form then uh, we'll go back once it comes out of here then we'll go back and line it up put the tape on and get everything uh, verything on the inside and just same thing that we did for the wing just gonna do it all over again it's interesting the instructions say that it's not necessary to do that and the only way I can figure that wouldn't be necessary is if you're actually just epoxying the whole inside of the plywood um, instead of uh, taping it off and going that route. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tape it off and do it the way I did the other. It works out great. So um, it might be a little more challenging since it's a much smaller curve, but that's okay. I will, I will work around it. And so I'm going to get some water in the tub and get that one soaking. And then I'm going to get set up where I can actually uh, start verithaning the... Uh, inside of the aileron here. All right. Thank you. 
So we'll let that soak for probably uh, probably four or five hours. Um, I'll just pop back in tonight um, a little bit later just to take it out and put it in the form. So, um, and then I'll just drop another one in here to soak after that. So, all right, cool. That's all. I can just hang out there. Okay, so I'm sure you have no interest in watching me paint Varathane onto this uh, inside of this aileron, but I just thought I would show you a little bit of it anyway, so you can just catch that piece of the process because it's something you got to do. And uh, I will finish that without you, and uh, we'll pick up in the next video with getting this out of water, getting it into the form. And by that time, I'll be able to unclamp all of this um, and. Uh, sand the other 45 degree blocks just smooth them out they look like they're not going to need much uh, and then we will flip the wing over and we'll start putting on the uh, 16th inch plywood that i cut earlier in two inch strips two and two and a 16th roughly um, and uh yeah man we're doing uh we're doing good here so uh all right uh if you're not a subscriber I invite you to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. And uh, as always, I'll catch you later.